Today, I'll present you a story about chasing the snow leopard. It's actually the project that I was doing for the last eight years, so the story is quite long. But we'll jump in. Uh, some of you might know that snow leopard is actually this fascinating big cat that you see on the screen, and it lives in Central Asia, the highlands of Southern Asia. It's one of the endangered species, so it's actually 2,500 of them still left in, out there in the wild. It's so rarely seen that it actually has a nickname of ghost cat. But for the climbers like me, uh, snow leopard means something different. It's actually an award uh, given to the, some of the most experienced altitude climbers that have made to five of the highest peaks of Central Asia, meaning Tenshan and Pamir mountain ranges. All of these peaks are uh, more than seven kilometers in height. And uh, this award shares uh, some of the same features as the big cat that you've seen before, that all those peaks are based in Central Asia. And secondly, it's quite a rare award. Only 600 people up to this date, in the history of 50 years, have received this award. And less than 400 have actually made to all of, the, uh, all of these peaks. I will present them shortly, but here you see the lowest of them, Peak Hantengri, that uh, in the local language translating from Kyrgyz means the Lord of the Skies. Uh, I was lucky enough to uh, find out early in my life that I like mountaineering because I, because I was born in the family of uh, mountain climbers and I knew already that I would like to test myself on the mountain. And from the very beginning I understood that I need special skills for climbing mountains safely. Uh, I had to have the special uh, physiology because, so, so to say, the genes, the right genes for mountaineering because some of the people can't even climb higher than five or 6,000 meters. Uh, I could, uh, had to be reasonably fit. Uh, then secondly, I had to learn how to move quickly, efficiently and uh, uh, comfortably on various terrains, uh, sky, uh, uh, rock, ice and snow. And uh, thirdly, I understood that I need to enjoy this, like uh, really enjoy mountaineering. Like here, I am sitting uh, high in the Alps above the valley. My legs are actually up, uh, in the abyss down there. I, I am connected by a rope uh, to the mountain there, and I'm eating from the rock piton uh, because I didn't have a spoon uh, due to uh, weight limitations to bring with me. Uh, so. I was pretty okay with cold and with physical challenges, so after three years of climbing in Europe, I've decided to go higher. And that was the first uh, snow leopard peaks of them all, uh, called Avicenna Peak, or formerly uh, Peak Lenina, because all of those peaks are actually the highest peaks also of the uh, former Soviet Union. Uh, so they had uh, different names previously. And this uh, peak, Avicenna, is considered to be uh, some of the easiest 7,000ers. But from my experience, I can tell you that there is no such thing as an easy 7,000er. And uh, uh, some of the people uh, underestimated this mountain and were killed on this mountain. Uh, this mountain also has been a venue for the largest mountaineering uh, tragedy to date, when 53 climbers were swept by an avalanche and killed in the process. But for us, the expedition was successful. I went there in 2007, and already the next year, uh, went to China, to Kunlunshan mountain range. It is less explored, actually, uh, not so many people have been there. So we went through uncharted territories, making a heavy trek, and climbed two unclimbed peaks at all. No, 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 uh, no one has been on these peaks before, naming them with Lithuanian names. So it was the first national record of ours. Then in 2010, uh, I decided to take it to another level and try my luck on another two snow leopard peaks, peaks Korzhenevskoy and peak Izmaiova Samoni, you'll see them shortly. And I wanted to make it in one month, in the period of one month only, which is a very challenging uh, thing to do because for your body to adapt to 7,000 meters, to climbing in 7,000 meters, you actually need at least two to three weeks uh, just for this adaptation. To, to use uh, this adaptation, I started with the lower of them, Peak Korzhenevskoy, and uh, 
This is a fascinating peak that looks like uh, 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 a cake a little bit, and it has this very nice, uh, nice uh, summit ridge, uh, where you see also the larger peak, uh, uh, peak Ismail Samoni, or formerly known as Peak Communus, the highest of them all, of snow leopard peaks and the highest of the former Soviet Union. And uh, we were very successful with weather and with our strength, so we climbed it in two and a half weeks, and then for ten other days we were climbing uh, the summit of uh, Ibn Sina in actually quite bad weather, and uh, spend uh, some time in cold as well. And uh, on these heights you can make some five to ten steps at the time before you're absolutely exhausted, and then you have to recuperate, you have to rest, and then you move on. So this is what the climbing looks like, it's 7,000 meters, but I again, like this. In 2012, we went again to China, to Kunlun Shan, uh, trying different things. This time, I climbed the higher peak, uh, seven and a half uh, kilometers in height, which is actually the, the highest my peak to date. But uh, we did one uh, extra thing. We climbed with skis on and descended the peak with skis, making another national record. Uh, and by this point, I already felt quite comfortable with heights, uh, ha having enough experience to try myself on an 8,000. Uh, 8,000 er uh, and this was the mountain I chose for that. I wanted to have a relatively technical experience. So uh, this was Nanga Parbat in 2013. Joined in the international expedition and went to Pakistan to try on this peak. It has the name of Killer Mountain because of the accidents that happened in the former uh, when starting, the people started climbing uh, this peak. Uh, its uh, uh, slopes are very steep, it's avalanche prone scope, slopes, uh, so a lot of accidents happen today. But uh, for us, it was another experience, and actually it was the uh, hardest times in my, in my life. Uh, some of the darkest moments, because when I was climbing at 6,000 6, meters, sleeping in the high camp up there, uh, the group of Taliban terrorists storm into our our base camp two vertical kilometers below us, killing ten of the climbers, and one of the Pakistani in there. Among those killed was also my partner and my fellow climber uh, Ernestas, also from Lithuania. And of course, after this experience, I uh, had to force myself not to think about high peaks and going uh, back to Central uh, Central Asia. But then two years passed and uh, another opportunity window uh, opened for me when uh, our expedition leader for Nanga Parbat expedition offered me to go uh, to the two remaining snow leopard peaks in Tianshan. And I knew that this will be hard because both peaks are very technical, they are high and they are the northernmost uh, 7000 on earth. It means that their close proximity to Taklamakan deserts brings bad weather, can bring bad weather very quickly, so the weather is changing all the time. And when you are trap, trapped up there at 7,000 uh, meters on the mountain in bad weather, it's really very little chance for you to survive. So Hantengri is, uh, although not that high, but it's very technical mountain, it's really mountaineer's mountain, looks like a pyramid. And uh, Victory Peak, or Pobeda, or Genghis Chokusu in different languages, uh, is a legend by itself because uh, this peak is known, notoriously known for bad accidents happening on this on this peak, and the statistics is as such that 400 people, less than 400 people, actually have climbed to the top of this peak, and 90 people have died on this mountain. So, you might think now, I mean, what kind of reasonable person or what kind of person? Uh, at all would even consider climbing, taking the decision of climbing these peaks. And I actually didn't, didn't take this decision. I thought that I will go to Tianshan, to the base camp, I will climb Hantengri, which is a nice peak that I knew that I could climb, and then if I feel okay, and if the mountain conditions will be right, I'll try to climb Victory Peak as well. I had time uh, for that, for this expedition. So here I was in the base camp, at uh, 4,000 meters, 4,100 meters, and I stayed there for 35 days on, on, on the glacier there, having no uh, access to um, shower, to toilet, no roof on my 
uh, above my head, basically living in a tent uh, and climbing the mountains around me. You know, they're Hantengri and the Victory Peak. So uh, again, I needed acclimatization and went on uh, for Hantengri right away. Uh, this involved some uh, jumping over the crevasses and icy mountain rivers up there when you reach the first higher camp. Then it's a bit of quite easy cl climbing, actually, on snow. It also involves finding uh, the right spot for your tent, not to be swept away by the avalanche. You see those little spots there in the uh, right corner on this photo. And we were very blessed by good weather. Eventually, when on our third attempt on the mountain, uh, the summer day was very clear with uh, basically no wind and not that cold, really. And we were enjoying climbing this beautiful peak. At first, it was easier, then it got more uh, technical, uh, requiring to use uh, mountaineering techniques that I've learned already in the Alps. And there I was on the peak of Hantengri after spending 21 days of climbing after I arrived uh, in the base camp. So now I was faced with this decision whether I would go uh, to try the Victory Peak. And I was actually already lacking some time and uh, <laughs> late for my work. But uh, well, the mountain was kind of inviting me to come. Uh, the weather was good and the forecast was good for it. Uh, so I decided to give it a shot. I said, well, I'll go and see, and if I feel something not right, then I'll return. That's it. Try another time. I know that some guys made it in fourth or third or fifth time, so no problem for me to turn around maybe this time. So again, I, there we went. It, uh, the route itself is very interesting. It's actually, again, navigating through this uh, Zvezdochka on the Star uh, Glacier. Then you have to climb on the uh, um, icefall, which is more technical part, then some glacier walking, then sleeping in snow caves for three days, three nights, <laughs> actually. Uh, we, we had to, to spend one more night there because the hurricane winds were ranging on the a on the peak uh, ripping uh, some of the tents that were left there apart so we had to stay in this uh, in this snow cave uh, feeling a little bit more secure than than out there in the tent and then again some more technical climbing seeing uh, all the way uh, to mount hantengri this beautiful uh, pyramid in the background uh, our third camp was uh, pitched on a small ledge, snowy ledge, we, because the slopes are so steep that you cannot put a tent anywhere else. And my partner, Marius, uh, from Poland, was actually sleeping halfway already in the air because there was no space for us both uh, in, in this location, in this uh, little tent down there. And then another night in snow caves, and after five uh, days, we reached the notorious uh, uh, ridge of uh, um, Victory Peak, where a lot of accidents happen when those uh, climbers are trapped uh, there at 7,000 meters. And on one side, you have these big cornices, the chunks of ice that if you step on them, you fall down there three kilometers to Kyrg Kyrgyzstan. And on the other side, there is a slip slopes uh, back to China. So. Uh, you have to be very careful climbing on this uh, six kilometer long ridge. And uh, just before the, the summit, uh, you find the knife edge ridge uh, again, where there, there is very early and it's quite, uh, quite cold and airy. You have three kilometers on both sides, you know. So you have to be careful. And there are no fixed ropes. There are nothing to secure you, just the rope in between uh, of you and your partner. And there it was, the summit. I uh, spent eight hours uh, from the uh, snow caves to reach it. And uh, what was fascinating about the summit, that for the first time I didn't find any sign of civilization on the summit. I mean, there is nothing, no cross, no any sign to mark that it's a summit. Usually you see at least something uh, so that the people would understand that uh, there, that's it, that's the summit. But there was, there was nothing, it's just, uh, uh, just the skies above you. And then I started the descent. I, I was a bit slower than my friends because I developed uh, a throat infection. So yeah, 
uh, I didn't see them already because the snowstorm started. And then I had to use all my skill that I learned through 10 years of my mountaineering, uh, uh, years in the mountains to navigate back this dragon ridge uh, to the snow caves. And I'm thankful to my friends that put a small headlight to for, for me to see where the snows, uh, snow caves were because I spent 17 hours climbing there to the summit and back to the caves all on 7,000 meters and above. So I was actually very exhausted and was very lucky to reach the, the, the snow caves. And then the next day we made it back to the glacier, which was again an epic story by itself, but I will tell it later maybe, with all uh, these four, three, my friends, uh, that climbed together, Sergei from Ukraine, uh, Alexei from Russia, me you see here, and Marius uh, from Poland. So we're very happy because three of us now could claim to be the snow leopards. And now you might ask, you know, what? Well, I'm not really fond, fancy of these cold places and going to heights. What's in it for me? Well, let me tell you this. Actually, in my life, I have many fears, and I'm hum like most humans do. I'm also afraid of heights, you know. But uh, for me, the biggest fear is not trying, you know, not uh, seeing, trying to find what I'm good at, what's my potential. So for you, also, you know. You can learn, use my fear that drove me through this, all the project of Snow Leopards. If you have some dream that you really like, you know, you have desire that you want to prove, you go for it. Don't be afraid, you know, and you'll be happy to find your own Snow Leopards on the way. Thank you.